In Activity 5, Forecasting with a Barometer, students learn to use a barometer to measure the air pressure in the classroom. The students first investigate barometric pressure readings as a means of forecasting the weather and then add barometric pressure readings to their weather data collection. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 5, Barometer, Package of Hook and Loop Fasteners, paper fastener, and weather stations. You will also need to provide weather reports and a piece of string. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 5 for each student. Collect weather reports and obtain a current atmospheric pressure reading. Calibrate the barometer by turning the little screw in the rear plate of the barometer until the needle points to the current atmospheric pressure. Tap gently on the glass to make the needle settle into position. Select a place in the classroom where the barometer can be hung or rested. Students should be able to read the barometer without disturbing it. Each team of two will need their weather station. To begin the activity, inform students that a barometer is a weather instrument that measures air pressure. Sketch an early barometer consisting of a tube closed on one end and containing no air, standing open end down in a cup of mercury. As the pressure of the air pushes on the surface of the mercury in the cup, the mercury is forced up into the tube because there is no air and no air pressure in the other end of the tube to push it down. Tell the students that the height of the mercury was measured in inches. Next, hold up the aneroid barometer for everyone to see and explain what it is. Tell students that aneroid means that the instrument does not need liquid to operate. Therefore, an aneroid barometer does not contain mercury. Bring students' attention to the pointers on the face of the barometer and the holes in the back. Explain that as air enters the back of the barometer, it surrounds a sealed metal box that has almost no air inside it. As the air pressure surrounding the box goes up and down, the metal box compresses and expands respectively. Tell them that one side of the box is connected to the pointer, so as the shape of the box changes, the pointer moves. By determining where the pointer is on the face of the barometer, one can assign a barometric pressure reading for the air pressure at that location. Explain that most barometers have another pointer also. This handset pointer is attached to the knob on the barometer cover and can be moved by twisting the knob. Positioning this handset pointer to the same position as the indicator pointer is a great way to mark the position of the indicator pointer. Later, when you look at the barometer, the indicator pointer may have moved, but the handset pointer will still be where you previously positioned it. This allows you to record any changes in barometric pressure. Bring the student's attention to the two scales on the face of the barometer. Even though this kind of barometer contains no mercury, the air pressure is often still measured in inches of mercury. Point out the outside scale that indicates inches of mercury and the inside scale that indicates the metric equivalent of inches of mercury, millibars. Distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 5 to each student. Have students interpret the air pressure readings on the diagrams of aneroid barometers on their activity sheets. Next, ask what do barometric pressure readings have to do with forecasting the weather? Students should remember from the previous activity that areas of different air pressure cause wind and that wind is the way storms cross the surface of the earth. Explain that a falling barometer reading and warm temperatures precede stormy weather and probably some sort of precipitation. A rising barometer reading and cooler temperatures indicate fairer weather and probably dry conditions. Have students complete Activity Sheet 5. Tell students that the barometer will be left in the classroom so that they can record the reading after every observation session and add this data to their weather stations under the Daily Weather and Observation section. 
Have the students add today's barometric pressure reading to the data collected during today's continuing observation session and post this data on their weather stations. Remind them to record barometric pressure data during each upcoming continuing observation session. Have students retrieve their weather stations. Have them secure the latest weather report on top of the other reports. Finally, conduct a discussion comparing yesterday's forecast with today's actual weather. To conclude the activity, have the students return their weather stations to the designated areas. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.